Out of all the basic concepts related to maintaining a health promoting diet and lifestyle, there is one core concept that is the basis for all of it. If you understand calorie density, you will be well on your way to eliminating type 2 diabetes from your life, heart disease, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and all without the aid of any prescription medication. I'm going to explain it to you right now. Hey everybody, this is Dylan. The biggest challenge for people that are trying to wrap their heads around getting off of a standard American diet and transitioning to a health promoting diet and lifestyle is simply understanding what it is you need to do. What do you eat? How do I actually go about doing this? There's so much information out there frankly bad information about what you should and should not eat. It is really, really challenging to know who's telling the truth. I am telling you the truth. Let's talk about calorie density. Some of you out there watching that already understand this concept may be thinking, oh, it's more than just calories, it's metabolism too. And yes, it is a little bit about metabolism too and we're going to talk about that later in this video. But first, I want to introduce this core concept of calorie density. The, the way that you get to a weight that you want to be at if you're not there already and then you maintain it for the rest of your life is simply understanding what basic food you can eat. And the rules are so simple, I promise you, you're going to fully understand this concept by the end of the video. Many of you watching may come from a background of having to count calories. You're used to calorie restriction, you're used to sizing out certain portions of food on your plate, you're used to adding up points or weighing food to understand how many calories you're getting so that you can maintain your diet around this specific calorie mark. This is not sustainable. These practices will not work out for you in the long run. Nobody has time to be dealing with this at every meal for the rest of their lives. If you were just doing it for 30 days and you were going to do this and that's the way that dieting worked, then maybe you would be able to do a 30 day diet where you're counting calories, restricting, weighing food, portioning food. Maybe you can do that. But when I use the word diet, I'm not talking about a thing that you do for a little while to get things back in order so that you can go into your next period of gorging on standard American fare. It doesn't work. The diet word has been completely ruined by all of this industry. Diet means the things you eat every day forever. When you have a certain diet, it's your diet. It's the way that you actually eat always. So we have to make it so that your diet that you actually eat always is a good one to where you never have to count calories, you never have to portion, you never have to think of food actually at all because you've created this system and I don't want to make, make it sound too complex by calling it this system that you have to create because really it's, it's not that complex at all. It's the simplest way of eating you could ever imagine, much simpler than the way that we're used to. The most important thing that has to happen for you to feel satisfied when you're eating is that you're full and you feel satiated. You feel like you don't desire putting another bite of food in your mouth because you've had enough. If you can do that and get the right amount of calories at the same time without thinking about it, then you've solved the entire problem for the rest of your life and you never have to deal with this again. But most people haven't. They don't understand calorie density. They don't understand that a handful of this food is a lot more calories than a handful of this food. And if you understand that, you'll know that you want to focus more on the calories, the calorie dilute food, the one where if you take the handful and put it in your mouth, it's less calories than this other thing. So that is the co core concept that I want to explain today. Most people that are eating to when they're full and satiated at their meals are eating around three or four pounds of food every single day. So. If we're all eating the same amount of food every day, why do we all look different? Why, are, why do we have an obesity problem now that we didn't have before? The problem is that three or four pounds of food today does not have the same amount of calories in it that it used to have, say, 30 or whatever years ago. In one of my previous vegan health videos, I talked about calories just falling out of the sky, how we're just living in a world where we have access to the most calorie-rich foods, the animal products, the oils, all of the processed refined carbohydrates and, and packaged foods and junk food, vegan or not, that we could ever have dreamed of in our history. 
and we need to recreate our environment and focus on whole foods, different types of foods than these ones that are most readily available to us in packaged, ready to eat form. So the idea here is to get back to a world where we're still gonna eat the same three to four pounds of food every day. We have to in order to feel physically satisfied with the amount of food that we're eating. So we're not going to try to reduce that three or four pounds. It's impossible. You'll never feel well doing that emotionally or physically ever in any sustainable fashion. You've got to continue to eat your three to four pounds of food every day. So now how can we do that where you're getting a more reasonable amount of calories so that you're not gaining weight and if you're currently overweight, you'll be able to normalize your weight back down to your goal weight. It's simple. You just have to focus on these basic core uh, calorie densities off of this one simple calorie density chart that I'll show you. I'm not going to quote science. I'm not going to quote studies and show you a bunch of graphs. I just have one simple chart. And once you understand like three or four numbers, we're talking, if you were going to memorize this chart, it'd be like four flashcards. Okay. Four flashcards. That's it. This is the easiest vocabulary test you've ever taken. All we got to do is understand some basic calorie densities for some basic food groups. Then those food groups are the ones we focus on entirely. We can eat three to four pounds of them every day like we normally would of food and we're happy and we're getting just the right amount of calories and life is good. The chart I'm showing you here is a calorie density chart from nutrition expert Jeff Novick. And all we've got here is a list of foods along the bottom and their calorie densities are these bars, okay? If we go all the way to the left, we see that vegetables, such as anything you would ever put on a salad, greens, fresh, non-starchy vegetables are around 100 calories per pound. That means that if you ate your normal three to four pounds of bulk per day on just 100 calorie per pound vegetables, you'd be eating 300 to 400 calories in a day. Obviously, that is completely unsustainable. No one is going to eat three to 400 calories of vegetables a day and feel satisfied. You need to be eating more food than that. But that gives you a sense of the most calorie dilute foods available to you. And we're gonna talk about food sequencing and why this number is important for the way that you can fill up on calorie dilute foods. Remember, calorie dilute foods are just the opposite of calorie dense foods. The next bar on this graph is fruit. Fruit is 300 calories in a pound of fruit, which means if I have a pound of lettuce in this hand and a pound of fruit in this hand, there are 100 calories in this hand and 300 in this hand. You can see how, although they will take up a similar amount of space in your belly, that one's going to provide you with significantly less calories, a third as many calories with the veggies than the fruit. The next two columns in the chart are our unprocessed complex carbohydrates and our legumes. I like to kind of bunch them together and just call them starches. Uh, this would include potatoes, rice, beans, legumes, whole grains, everything like that. These are all gonna be between 400 and 600 calories per pound. Pretty significant amount of calorie increase compared to fruit and veggies, right? To be more specific, potatoes are around 400 calories per pound. Whole grains are around 500 calories per pound. The legumes, the beans are around 600 calories per pound, but they're all right, right around four to 600. I treat them all as if they're in the same category. And all of these that I've mentioned so far are the main foods that I I'm always eating every single day without fail. If you eat all these foods, you see that vertical green arrow on the chart here that's pointing down between 500 and 600. The purpose of that arrow is to say that our average amount of calories per pound that we're eating is about 550 calories per pound. This makes sense because we're eating between three and four pounds of food per day. And if we average out around 550 calories per pound, then we're right around say 1800 to 2000 calories per day and we're eating the exact perfect amount of calories to maintain our metabolism, our well-being, our daily operation. Let's check out these other foods on the chart that are eaten generally in excess as part of a standard American diet. That would include animal products, about 1,000 calories per pound. I've said this before in past videos, but yes, we did eat some animal products as part of our natural history during the times when we were hunter-gatherers, but the animal products were very scarce. There was not a successful hunt every day, and the animal products that we did eat were very, very lean 
protein. They were not like the animal products that we're eating today. Obviously, you know I am not advocating for a diet with any animal products at all, but I'm telling you that the way that they used to be eaten is nothing like they're eaten now. The calorie density of animal products is actually one of the smallest issues associated with the animal products. That ignores the fact that the animal protein is cancer causing, that the animal products are very toxic from environmental toxins, feed toxins, antibiotics that are injected, hormones, etc. There are a million reasons why animal products should not be eaten. We're only focusing on the calorie density issue. So that's animal products. Let's go on. Now you have 1400 calories per pound are the processed carbs. Bread is around 14 or 1500 calories per pound. All of the processed cookies, snacks, flours, all of these things, they've been dried, they've been refined, the water's been taken out, they're much more calorie dense than eating the whole starches that I mentioned are between four and 600 calories per pound. So you should avoid these. Junk food and other processed garbage is around 2300 calories per pound. You can see that if you eat a handful of junk food and a handful of beans, you're gonna be getting way more calories without doing anything differently. You're still chewing, you're still swallowing, but you're eating inadvertently way, way more calories. And it's hard because your taste buds really like this at first until you get used to this other thing, the beans and the fruit and the veg over here. So you've got to avoid all of the junk food. Nuts and seeds are an interesting one because although they are really high calorie density, 2,800 calories per pound, including the nuts, seeds, nut butters like peanut butter, almond butter, tahini, all of that, those are around 2,800 calories per pound. Now, nuts, Art can be a perfectly healthy thing to eat in your diet unless they cause you to go off the rails and trigger you into eating way too much nuts and junk food, etc. But nuts, as Dr. Furman would say, are a very important part of the daily diet. But you have to make sure that you're eating them in very small one or two ounce amounts per day. Can you do that? Do you have the ability to maintain a one or two ounces of nuts diet in a day? If you can do that, then great, by all means, have a little bit. You're only having a couple ounces of nuts at 2,800 calories for a whole pound, that's 16 ounces. You're not eating 16 ounces. You're gonna eat a little bit added to your 100 calories a pound veg, your 300 calories a pound fruit, and your four to 600 calorie a pound starches. So it's still going to even out to 550 calories per pound for your daily intake. Is that making sense? So even though nuts are really high, you're only eating such a small amount of them that you're still gonna maintain your normal average. However, if you're a person who can't maintain just a small amount of nuts and you're eating so much that it's causing your 550 calorie average to go up to say seven or 800 calories per pound average daily, then you've got a problem and you've got to eliminate nuts altogether, at least until you get things under control and start to regain control of of your basic taste buds, desires, tendencies, etc. The most calorie dense food that you can possibly eat is straight oil. This would include olive oil, coconut oil, every oil, all of the oils ever would be around 4,000 calories per pound. You've got to avoid them at all costs. They can take your delicious meal of whole starches, four to 600 calories per pound, and ruin the whole thing by making them closer to 800 calories per pound. If you put a tablespoon or two of olive oil all over your healthy food, you're gonna be adding around 250 calories to that meal. That will totally throw off your average and it will be almost impossible to maintain your weight as you want it to be. So you've gotta completely eliminate oil. It is total and utter poison. There are just no exceptions to it. Again, if you can maintain a lifestyle where you're having oil so infrequently, like I do, once in a while, that your average daily calorie intake is still around 550 calories per pound, and you can maintain this control, then you're probably okay. You can have oil once in a while on these very rare occasions, but if it's causing you to eat it every day, it's causing you to not allow your taste buds to fully adjust to the good food that you should be eating, then you've got to eliminate it altogether, the same as you might have to do with nuts, the same as you definitely need to do with animal products and processed carbs and refined junk. Sugar, for example, is 1,800 calories per pound. That's not on this chart. Just call it somewhere between the processed carbs and the junk food is sugar, and you should avoid it or else eat it in extremely small amounts 
under control. And if you don't have control, you have to be totally honest with yourself and say, hey, sugar's causing me to not maintain my weight because it's adding richness to the food. I'm overeating the food. I'm tending towards all of the processed junk food and therefore I need to eliminate it altogether. That is why the safest thing to do especially for the first 30 days that you're transitioning from a standard American diet to a health promoting diet and lifestyle would be to focus on the first three bars of this graph. The veggies at 100 calories per pound, the fruit at 300 calories per pound, and then your starches, the four to 600 calories per pound. If you eat according to this chart and you focus on these first three or four bars, I guess the, the unprocessed carbs and the legumes are split into two. So the first, first four bars of this chart, you're gonna be in really good shape. You're gonna be eating exactly the way that you should be. You're going to feel full right when you should feel full because that's how we evolved to be. We, we evolved eating this basic diet that averaged out to around 550 calories per pound and sure enough, we felt full when we got it, two or three meals a day, whatever it is. And so, that is all there is to do. You don't have to portion anything out. You don't have to count calories. I encourage you not to because counting calories can create some really toxic habits that are, you're gonna have a hard time kicking if you've really obsessed on this for a long time. And a lot of people that have been struggling with their weight for an extended period of time are really hung up on counting calories. If you wanna do it, you can. It's not hurting you, but it is causing you to continue to perform this habit that you don't need to be doing. You, don't, you could free up time, you could free your mind of having to fixate on calories and just cruise. So if you eliminate all of these other bad foods from your environment and you do what I said in that previous video where I said you recreate your environment, eliminate all the junk from your house, from your pantry, from your fridge, from your freezer, and just focus on these first four bars of the chart, you're going to definitely start to lose weight. And now some of you may start to lose weight and then you're gonna plateau and you're gonna ask yourself, why am I plateauing? This dude told me that all I have to do is eat these foods and everything's good. Well, there's two things that could be going on. One is about metabolism and one is about dishonesty. And the dishonesty means you may be sneaking in more non-compliant foods than you're willing to allow yourself to believe. You may be putting sriracha all over your food. Sriracha, look at this, zero calories per serving. That's fantastic. Clearly it's very calorie dilute and you can be eating this as much as you want, right? No, this has salt in it. Do I eat sriracha? Yes, I do. But I want you to be aware of the fact that there are 75 milligrams of sodium in one teaspoon of sriracha. What does that mean to you? It means that it's gonna make your food taste a lot better, a lot richer, and it could cause you to eat more than your three to four pounds a day. So even if the calories are around 550 calories per pound on average, if you're adding hot sauce to your food, then it's giving it a little bit of an artificial improvement of that flavor, which is going to result in you eating more than your average of three to four pounds of food per day. I know, it does it for me. When I add salt to food, I fill up way more than I would if I didn't add salt to the food because I feel satiated sooner. I feel a little bit bored of the food sooner. I feel full sooner. I'm good, I'm done. But if I'm adding salt, man, those flavors start to really, your taste buds are like, keep it going. This is, this is much richer. Let's go beyond the three to four pounds per day and keep it up. So just because a hot sauce has no calories does not mean that it's not going to affect the amount of calories that you're eating in a whole day of food eating. So before I talk about metabolism, and I'm getting there, I wanna show, tell you how to calculate calorie density. It's really, really simple. First of all, you shouldn't really be eating this as peanut butter. You shouldn't really be eating any packaged food, but if you're going to, you can at least understand the calorie density and notice the salt too. So let's talk about peanut butter, for example. Peanut butter, it says here, a serving size is two tablespoons, and in parentheses it says 32 grams. How are we, and then a ca the calories is 200 calories. So for 32 grams, it's 200 calories. That is not in calories per pound, so we don't know what the hell to do with that when we're gonna compare it to the things in this chart. So we need to convert it. So grab your calculator and let's go through this. We know there are 454 grams in a pound of food, okay? So we need to take the full pound of food, 454 grams, and divide it by a serving size of this, which is 32. That means that there are 14.2 servings 
of peanut butter in one pound of peanut butter. So now we need to multiply the 14.2 times the number of calories, 200, in one serving, and we see that peanut butter is 2,837 calories per pound, which is obviously extremely high. Now the fact that this peanut butter has 40 milligrams of sodium in a two tablespoon serving is only going to make it that much harder to eat a small amount of. Peanut butter can be very much a trigger trouble food for a lot of people. Let's put that aside. I often get asked about calories in chocolate or cacao. Spoiler alert, they are the same calorie density. Let's go through it. We've got on the back here a 28 gram serving. So we're gonna take our 454 grams, per, which is a pound, divide by the 28 grams to get the number of servings in a pound. 16.2, multiply that by 110 calories in a serving. That is 1,783 calories per pound. So you can see that even the plainest, most unadulterated chocolate or cacao powder in existence is still 1,800 calories per pound. You may be thinking, oh, who cares? You eat so little of it. It's just a tablespoon in my oat clusters or whatever. Well, here's the thing. If the tablespoon of chocolate in your oat clusters is making you eat way more oat clusters because it's adding that richness to it, then you can see where I'm going with this. It's gonna cause you to overeat. It's gonna cause you to eat more than your daily average of three to four pounds of food in a day. That is the problem with adding calorie dense one or two tablespoons of items to your main, to your normal food. So yeah, you're not going to get fat just because of a little bit of chocolate unless you're like really super overdoing it. And I know some people do have chocolate problems where they are super duper overdoing it. But for the most part, it's adding richness to the food. It's taking your food that are in those first four bars of our calorie density chart and it's making them much richer. So that is why you have to be careful adding the calorie rich items to the calorie dilute items, even if it's just sparingly in small amounts. Be super careful. So let's talk a little bit more about plateauing before we get into the metabolism stuff. For the most part, if your metabolism is working properly the way that it should be, you're going to reach a weight and you're going to cruise at that weight. And it's going to be based on the food that you're eating. So if you reach a plateau that is a higher weight than what you want to be at, then it probably means that you need to change the food a little bit more and get even more strict. You need to focus on even more calorie dilute foods. This may mean that you need to completely eliminate nuts and you need to take on Chef AJ's approach, which is absolutely no overt fats at all, which would include nuts, avocado, soy, coconut, olives, all of those foods would be completely eliminated for Chef AJ in order to be as strict as you can on the calorie density chart and thus maintain a very low calorie density for your three or four pounds of food average per day. So when you hit plateaus, the first thing you wanna do is start to get more and more strict and see what's going to cause you to break through that plateau. Another way to sort of bust through one of these plateaus would be to sequence your meals differently. If you're starting your meal with the four to 600 calories per pound starches, then you're not getting some of those calorie dilute items. So one way to get less calories in the same bulk of food in a meal would be to make sure that you're starting every single meal that you eat with the lowest calorie density, the non-starchy vegetables. Start every meal with a salad or steamed veggies, steamed broccoli, cauliflower, what have you. And that's going to take up a bunch of more space before you get on to the calorie bulk of the meal, the starches. You'll take up more space with these low calorie density foods so that when you move on to the starches, there's going to be less space available for them before you start to feel totally full and satisfied. So this will result in you eating less calories in that meal without ever having to count calories or do anything crazy to get there. If you're liking this video so far, please hit the like button and subscribe. It really, really helps me on YouTube. Let's keep going. Now the other thing is the metabolism. If you are at your goal weight, your metabolism is probably operating at its normal rate. The amount of calories that you burn every day during your daily operation is going to be just where it should be. Maybe it's around 2,000 calories a day, let's say. That means that if you eat 2,000 calories, you're going to maintain your weight. If you're eating a little bit less than the 2,000 calories that you're burning every day, you're going to lose more weight. You've gotta eat according to your metabolism. Now, if you are overweight or obese, 
and you're adopting these principles all of a sudden, you may find that you plateau all of a sudden way before you should be. And this could be because your metabolism is compensating for the dramatic change that it's just undergone. It's very normal for your metabolism to kind of be like, what's up? Why are the calories suddenly dropping significantly? I better reduce the amount of calories that I'm burning each day so that we don't starve. This is a very normal process that your body may go through. But the bottom line is, the longer you maintain the healthy diet, the more your metabolism is going to be like, oh, okay, this is normal. Let's go back to normal operation, get back to burning calories, and you're going to normalize. Now, if you want to jumpstart your metabolism, there are a few different things that you can do because you might see that it's not just about cutting the calories via focusing on the calorie density chart. You may need to allow your metabolism to catch back up, restart, reboost, whatever the hell you want to call it. So here are those couple of things you could do. One, you could do intermittent fasting, meaning you could narrow your food window. I'm not going to get too deep into intermittent fasting in this video. Let's say that you narrow your food window to an eight hour period every day and you're strict on it and you only eat your three to four pounds of food, same amount of food, but you're only eating it in an eight hour period. This is going to have the effect of when you get up in the morning, you're going to have burned through a lot of your glycogen stores. So you're going to get into sort of a fat burning mode, like a mild form of ketosis, if you want to call it that, where you're starting to burn a little bit of fat before you start your first meal of the day. For a lot of people that are trying to burn fat, this may be a good time to exercise as in the morning when you're carbs are all depleted and you want to burn through a little bit of fat before you have your first meal, this is one way to sort of jumpstart, get through that plateau. Maybe go on a 30 minute morning walk before you have your first meal and, and you've gone a, a whole 16 hour period where you haven't eaten because you went eight hours where you were eating and then you have 16 hours where you aren't eating. It doesn't have to be, it could be 10 hours and 14. You can try it like that first. You could do 12 and 12 to start with if you've never given it any attention before. And you can build your way up to an intermittent fasting schedule that may work best for you. That is one way to start to burn a little bit of extra fat as you kind of normalize and get to your goal weight. The other would be a, a prolonged water only fast. You can check out my interview with Dr. Goldhammer about water fasting. You can check out my uh, seven day synopsis of my water only fasting experience that I did at True North. But the idea here is that when you go into a ketosis state, not like by eating a ketogenic diet, but actually a prolonged water only fast, you are going to jumpstart your metabolism into burning fat, call it whatever you want. It's going to bust you through some of the hangups that are metabolism related as you switch your diet over. This is something that needs to be done supervised. It's a more challenging thing to do. So anyway, that is the second way to get through these metabolism and bust through the plateau issues that you may experience. That is all there is to calorie density that you need to understand. This is the core concept. If you understand this and understand how to implement it in your life, you're going to get to your goal weight. You don't need to be focusing on the bioavailability of every single nutrient and every single food that you're eating. These are the things that if you're new to this are just going to be too taxing. It's going to feel like you're having to focus on too many things that you're like reading a science book at every meal and you don't need to be doing that. As you progress and these concepts that I've explained today in this video become really, really simple and you never have to think about it, you can start to look at some of these other things because that's kind of what happens when you get healthy is you get really interested in checking out these other things and you can dig deeper, but you don't need to be doing this all at once. You, we can't afford for people to get intimidated and then run away from this whole thing because they think there are a million videos from nutritionfacts.org that I've got to be implementing in every single meal every day or what have you. You just focus on calorie density, getting the basic food right, and then progress over time into these other things. Don't focus on all of these minute things all at once. It's too much to handle. Focus on calorie density, creating a system, a pattern that you can follow, recreating that old environment that we used to live in back in the day and eat that way. Get all the junk out of your house because nobody has the willpower to push up against these all powerful, calorie dense, rich foods. It's too hard. You've got to eliminate them from your world so that you can focus just on those first four bars of the graph 
the veggies, the fruits, the legumes, the grains, the potatoes, and you're good to go. That is pretty much it for calorie density. If there is anything I haven't covered adequately or you would like me to reiterate, please ask me. We're gonna be doing the live show Thursday so you can catch me there with your questions. Otherwise, leave a comment below and I'll talk about it in other videos. This is like the most important concept, period. So I will go over it as many ways as you want me to, gladly. If you'd like to see more of my vegan health series videos, click the playlist right here. And if you'd like a low calorie density, SOS free cheese sauce, no added salt, oil, or sugar, order some on the website through this link here. You can pour it all over your beans and pico, potatoes, broccoli, cauliflower, anything. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.